What's going on everybody? Scott Owen coming at you. We're going to go through kind of an annual thing that we do here on the channel. I'm going to take you through my indoor setup. We've made a few changes also making a few kind of, I would say, research type moves because we're looking at some future possibilities and future opportunities. So I figured it'd be a good chance for those that are trying to get better or get a setup. I want to show you what that's all about. And also my setup helped me have honestly the best ball striking year i've ever had so i figured i'd show you what i did to make it work so without further ado let's get into it all right so let's start talking about my setup here okay so you obviously can see we're going to talk enclosures here in a sec and i'm actually going to for enclosures we're going to take you out to where i'm doing a little research on the enclosures we're going to head up to carl's here up in Wisconsin. If you're familiar with them, they are awesome. So we'll head up there in a little bit. So before we do that, I'm going to talk about a couple other things that we are looking at for the enclosure and then a couple other items that I use. So as you can see here, I am using the flight scope Mevo Plus still. That is not going to change. Um, I'm actually on the 2023 version and I do use the PC version. So as we come over here, let's look at the computer. So I am an absolute fan of the FS Golf app. Um, I think it's awesome on PC. There's so many things you can do with this. You know, if I bring it up, I can have my cameras set up. I can put in different screens, right? I can do all of that as we go through and then that all will display. So. The way I like to do it is I'll actually put, you know, ball flight, I'll put numbers, and then I'll have either two cameras or I'll have a camera and then like the impact location, which is really, 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 really helpful. Okay, I'll get something like that going. Uh, as you can see, this is a Dell touchscreen. And then I have another touchscreen. I actually don't know the brand of this one because it's kind of old, I'm not gonna lie. So um, you can search for them. I think it's ViewSonic if I had to guess, but don't quote me on that, but I will link it down below in the description if I find it out. But these Dell ones are pretty slick because they're pretty lightweight and they have actually like a really clean look to them. And uh, as I mentioned before, you can do like a four screen, a 4K monitor, and you can get like an IR bezel, which I did in my previous video that you can actually hook up. The only reason I went away from the IR bezel was because one, I didn't need the 4K monitor necessarily. And then also that IR bezel being out here in the garage where it's very hot, very humid, I just had an issue with it sticking to the monitor because the monitor I had didn't have any place to stick it. You can see the, the screen runs right up to the edge. So there's nothing to really stick to. So it got a little bit tough to make that work. I was getting a little annoyed with everything falling out. Now, as you can see, big issue that you'll run into, wires, okay? Wires become a big issue when you're doing touch screens. This drives me nuts. I just have to like look away from it because I've tried to like make it look better, figure out the wiring situation. And right now I just can't. Again, we're looking at some future things, so maybe we'll change it up as we go through that. You can see this is also an inside look, how I do some of my live streaming and stuff. You know, if you want to live stream your rounds, I use this stream deck, which a student actually recommended. And then this is a Scarlet box. Um, this will actually let you plug microphones in and stuff. You have to get these little adapters if you want to do it. Um, that's how I can plug my microphones in um, as we go through. If I ever need to record, again, I do live online lessons and stuff through this. So just trying to do all that stuff. But uh, when we do our live shows, if you ever see me playing live, you ever see me do our live Scott Open Golf Show, this is how we do it, okay? So we get in over here. Now we're gonna get into a couple other things. You can see we've got tripods. We start getting into some of the things that are gonna make us better. You should have tripods, okay? You should have tripods in your studio. I am a massive fan of the eye range. You can see this is like a regular camera tripod, right? You can see how big this is. I don't even have the, the legs are all the way pushed out. And this thing's already way bigger than an eye range is. The nice thing about the eye range is it will actually come off, the legs come off, you have a spike, you can put it in the ground so you can travel with it in your golf bag. And then I have these little Dragonfly USB cameras that actually, I have two of these, one over here. I have one over for the face on view as well. These are from Swing Catalyst. Um, they plug straight into the computer. 
and they actually come up here when I use the FS Golf app. So when I hit a shot, I don't have a shot where I was recording. I didn't wasn't recording the shots, but if I am recording, you hit the shot, it'll clip the video from these cameras and it'll put it up there on the screen. So it's really cool. If you don't wanna go that route, I would highly recommend these live views. I talk about these all the time. I still use these live views in here because this actually works like a digital mirror, right? So this, this camera sits on a on the uh, eye range, okay? And I've got these little magnetic plates so you can just screw it in and then it'll become, all of a sudden it can stick magnetically. And then all I need to do is just be here hitting shots. I can have my phone, an iPad, whatever, down on the ground and I can actually work on the positioning of my swing, right? That is the biggest thing as you're looking through and you're gonna build a studio. You need to be thinking about, all right, yes, you got a launch monitor, that is great, but what other forms of feedback are you going to need? What are you going to be doing? If you're working on your golf swing, you need feedback for your swing, okay? The best form of feedback is going to be your video. Okay, video in some form, some way, shape, or form. I like these because, again, it's like a digital mirror. I can actually see the live feed while I'm looking down, draw lines, whatever, and I can rehearse that. Then when I hit a shot, it'll actually automatically clip that swing, make a video, and then we're good to go. So, again, you can do that. The other thing is you could also just use a phone. Now, with the iRange, you can actually take these phones, you can put either, you can get the mag puck, which just sticks on the back of the phone. You can then just clip it onto the iRange stand, or you can just get like the magnetic little sticky thing and put it inside the case, and then you would be able to stick the phone to the iRange. The only reason I don't do the, the first way, or I should, let's say, I don't stick the little mag magnetic part in here, is because it messes with the wireless charging, and I use that. So then I use the mag puck so you can just stick it on and off. And then I, when I go to wireless charge, that's how I can do that, okay? So a little bit of something there that I would look at. But those are gonna be the big things that I use and I use with students as we go. You know, again, another form of feedback, putting mats. You can get a putting mat. My putting actually hasn't been too bad this year. Wouldn't say it's fantastic, okay? But you can see I use this roll of putt from Perfect Practice. I like this one because it's small. I like the full versions a little better, but again, it's kind of space ridden in here where you know we're, we're just a little bit tied for space. And, and we're talking about space with the, the Mevo Plus, I've got seven foot six inches from hitting area to the Mevo Plus. I've gotten about nine feet of flight. I found that works really good for me, have a little bit more flight. And as far as numbers go, I've had zero complaints, okay? I've had zero complaints with the device. You know, a lot of people say, oh, the driver's short or this or that. Well, I carry, you know, the Arco system on all my clubs. So when I play rounds, I get all my distances for how far I'm hitting my clubs during rounds. And honestly, it's right on the money. And if anything, based on how I set it up in here and based on the wind that I'm playing the round with, I might even be a little long in here with the Mevo Plus just because maybe I've hit a lot of drives into the wind for some reason that day, right? Or it's colder or anything like that. So I've had no complaints as we go through to do this, okay? So the last thing I wanna show you as we go through this, okay, as we're talking about changes, okay, is we actually have a projector we're tying out, okay? You can see I have the big boy right here, okay? This is, both of these are from BenQ. I really like BenQ. Uh, I think they're quality and they're really good projectors. But you can see this one I've talked about already. This is the 4K Monster, okay? Now this is a 1080p, this is a newer projector, okay? This is the LH600ST. This guy, you can see it's much smaller, a much smaller form factor. It's only a 1080p projector, but it still has all of the golf mode, you know, as far as their, hey, how does the picture look? You still have the golf mode. You have Rec 709 color, which is the same as the other projector, the big boy, right? You also have some LED, you have an, it's an LED projector, I should say. You also have 20,000 hours of use, okay? So this isn't a projector where you're gonna be, you know, putting the bulb in and out or changing out bulbs. It's an LED projector, so it's gonna have a 20,000 hour life. 
If you do the math on that, that would be if you ran this projector 24 hours a day, you would go for about two and a third years. Okay, that's how long that would run. Okay, that's what 20,000 hours is. So it's gonna run a really, really long time. And you can see this has really good picture. Now, the one of the big differences you're gonna see as we go through when we're looking at the smaller projector to the bigger projector is going to be, you know, you have to control your ambient lighting a little bit more. It's not as bright. So you can see in here, we have studio lights for, the, for me to do these videos. But if I were to turn those off, Alexa, turn off golf studio lights, okay? You can see that picture comes up really, really nice. Very easy to see, very clear. And it's, I'm not worried at all about that, okay? You can see we just have a couple of lights that we would need to be able to see and hit the golf ball. That's really all you would want, okay? So it works really good, all right? The bigger 4K projector works good regardless of me having the studio lights on. So that's something you get with the higher end price point. Now, the install is also really easy, okay? All I had to do was just get this thing lined up with the with the screen, get my distance, and then you're working on trying to get the picture centered. That's gonna be a little different than the more expensive projector where there's gonna be some lens tilt shifts that you can do. You can move the lens around in the unit. But with this unit being so small, it's so easy to get it where you need to be. I don't need to worry about it being in the way of swings or anything like that. And then you still have your 2D cornering. You have easy, you know, those easy features that can make the screen fit. Plus you can always work with the graphics card as well to make sure that you're getting the screen size correct for whatever you have, okay? So those are some of the things I'm thinking about as we're going through and we're looking at our setup. Now, the big thing we're looking at is we're gonna improve this here. We're gonna actually be working on the enclosure. So I'm gonna actually head up to Wisconsin for that one because there's a lot that we need to look at as far as enclosures go. And I wanna see some of the options that are available from Carl's, so luckily a local company. So without further ado, let's take a trip up to Wisconsin and let's see what they have for those enclosures. All right, here we are. We are made it to just outside of Janesville, Wisconsin. We're in Milton, Wisconsin. Big factory here. We're checking out Carl's. They got a new showroom, so let's go uh, let's go explore. All right, guys, so I, I've talked about we're gonna get a new setup, okay? And so we have some projects we're working on that uh, I'm trying to go through. And so we decided to come up, visit Carl's up here in uh, Wisconsin, okay? So not too far, just over the border of from Rockford, Illinois, basically, if you're familiar. But uh, looking at a couple of things, I've now had my setup at home. You've seen that setup on our videos quite a bit. And there's some things as you go through the process, I feel like when you're getting into this, you just kind of learn through experience a little bit, which is which is great why I wanted to visit Carl's because they have a ton of experience talking to people. So they had some great ideas about what we can look at. But what I'm looking for, and some of the things from my setup that have been drawbacks that I've found, and one of those is going to be the self-contained part. And now remember, what is my setup? I set up some Mevo Plus, so that's a radar unit. So it's gonna need some flight. So I currently have nine feet of flight, so I have plenty of flight. I actually set my radar just inside of eight feet behind the ball. I still get very good reads. So that's just where I set it and I take more flight if I can get it and still get the unit to work well and give me good numbers, then I'm gonna always take more flight. But what I always found was my enclosure is a little bit on the smaller side. And again, you have to work within the space that you have, but 
for me, as somebody that has people come over to hit, or again, if I'm gonna be in a, in a position where people will be coming in to hit a lot, the thing that always worries you the most is where is that golf ball gonna go? So if you're getting a setup where you're gonna just be setting it up to hit for yourself, then you probably have a good feel for your game and you know, you're not that worried about, hey, what if the ball is going to go off to the side, it's not gonna come back, it's gonna hit somebody else, something like that. That's usually what you see uh, as you go through. Well, for me, it's, all right, I want the ball to be more enclosed. I want more self-containment. So that's gonna mean two things from my current setup. One, I've gotta get a deeper one. The current one I have only goes about five feet deep. It also is only about 10 feet wide, okay? So what that means is I can't hit from, not, not only is it not deep enough, but with that width, I can't hit from inside of the enclosure. So, you know, cause I'm gonna be up against the wall. Now, what we can do is we can actually get a little wider. If we can get at least 14 feet, which we've talked about in a previous video, is if I can get at least 14 feet, we can be clearly inside. And I actually have room to go up to 16 feet in my space. So this enclosure here, which we've got, this enclosure is just gonna come in just under 16 feet, okay, in the width. So this is where it's like, all right, this would be really, really good to be able to, all right, I wanna make sure I can hit any shots that go sideways. The ball's rarely gonna go backwards, okay? so. If it does, it's not gonna have any speed on it. So I'm not worried about that one. But if it goes sideways, I don't want it ricocheting off anything. If I keep a device off to the side, like a TV, which we'll do, we don't want that to get hit. That has happened in the past, okay? So those are the things that you gotta think about as you're going through your enclosure. So that's what I'm looking for as we go through this. The other thing that's really big is controlling ambient light, okay? You have to control your light for your projector. Now, I have, I'm very lucky, I do have one of the high-end projectors from BenQ, okay, it's a 4K projector, it's extremely bright, okay, and I love it, but I do, I do wish we could control even more of the light to make that projector look even better, and if we're gonna have more, if we're gonna have more bays to hit out of, okay, and I'm not gonna have that super high-end projector in all of them, it's gonna be very important to control the ambient light so that we are not gonna have a washed out image because the lower you go in the projector, there's a balance there. The lower you go, the less lumens, it's gonna get washed out a little bit easier compared to if you have a super, super high end projector. So I kind of have a need for both of them, but that's something I'm thinking about as we're going through too. So having this fully enclosed is also really, really helpful. And then the last thing is gonna be the look, right? The look of everything as we're going through. So why was I drawn to come up here and see this is the new C-Series, this is the Pro? What are some of the benefits? One, I really like the screen going all the way to the floor. That's really good look. Again, if we're gonna putt at all, or even just do chipping, I'm not much of a putter, as you know, if you watch the channel, it doesn't matter where I play for sim golf, it doesn't matter the launch monitor, I'm just not much of a putter. But I love the look, and if I'm hitting chips, I love that look of having that screen all the way down to the floor. It just gives it that little extra look of, hey, this looks really, really clean, it looks really professional, and it's also gonna look really, really good to somebody that's chipping, especially if you don't play a ton of sim golf, that might make this all the difference in judging how far you're gonna hit it, okay? So that's gonna be the big thing that I like as far as how it all looks. So again, there's gonna be a lot of look things as we go through this. Maybe some of you say, hey, oh, that's a lot more than I need. Something to think about as you go through it though. Again, there are more options that we can go. You can always say, hey, you know what? Scott, you need this, you need the ball all the way out, or you need the enclosure all the way out so the ball doesn't bounce around, that's fine, okay? I don't need that. Guess what, you can take that stuff in. Again, I wanna just help you go through the decision process, so when you go through and look at it, you say, all right, this is what I need based on my needs. So again, we're in a very, very, very big enclosure here. It's awesome, really cool, but these are some of the things that I would think about as you're going through and you're gonna decide, hey, is that what I need for me? And I'll tell you what, if you can work on it, if you can afford it and uh, it works in your space, I'd definitely take a look at this one. This one's